back. So right now the password shows errors, but we kind of want to see the messages as well. So let's just copy these messages from the, the email one and just show the error message required right here for the password and the repeat password. Very simple stuff. Just adding these two and saying password and required and we're going to say password is required like this. There we go. Now we're going to do the same for the repeat password and then we have these two functions available. Repeat password is required and let's just say repeat password here instead of password. There we go. Now these guys are set up as well um, so that we can actually see the messages whenever we don't have a password is required and we don't repeat password is required. There we go. But now I want to make a custom validation and that's some tough stuff but we'll do it anyway. We want to kind of figure out if these two match as well. So if I put in this and I put in an A here, A, and I put in a B here, B, these guys should actually tell me the repeat password does not match the password. Let's try and do that. Let's try and make such a custom validator. So step one is actually to go into our shared folder right here and we're going to make a new file. And we're just going to make uh, a simple validator file and I'm just going to hard code it right here. So I'll write uh, password validator TS. Uh, now we could start making these, I, I encourage you to start making these more generic and you can start making some pretty awesome validators yourself. For now I'll just make this simple one. Um, just to kind of give you guys an example of how to use the validators. And now to get started using this validator, we need to use a few things. So I'm just going to jump over to Angular where I kind of found on the fundamentals, forms, form validation. If I scroll down, there's actually an ex uh, explanation on how to make a validator right here. And there's a lot of this we can use and then we'll have to generate the rest ourselves. So what I'm going to grab from this one is I'm going to export a simple function right here. And I'm not going to pass anything in, so let me just try and copy all of this and clean it up. Now you know where it's residing, right? So I'm pasting this in here. I don't want to pass in anything, so let's just clean that up. I want to make this into an actual validator FN, which is a way for me to explain to the system that this is going to be a validator that I'm building. I want to keep this form control right here. That's actually what I'm passing into the validator, so automatically when this validate is being executed, it's going to pass in the control that I want to validate, right? That's going to be our repeat password control. Let's just call this uh, match like this. That's just going to be the name of the validator. Match password. Let's actually call that because I've made it pretty specific right here that is for matching the password. Good. Now we've had, now we've set up most of the things. We just need to kind of figure out what should be put in between right here. All of this is kind of standard all the way down to this one. Now this is kind of hard to read, but it pretty much just means that I expect that you'll return something in this general direction. So um, you can remove that if you want to, but it's just a, again, type safety to say, I expect that you'll return something looking like a key and a string. Uh, that's kind of the goal of this entire function. Okay, so now we have this available. Sweet, what do we do next? Well, for the first, the first thing I want to tell you is that this is going to be our repeat password. So I just call it RPW. That's what we're going to actually send in to this password right here. So how do we, what do we do next? Well, we are going to say that we want to kind of make a constants, a const, and that's going to be the parent container, or in our case, that's actually going to be the form, right? The form group. So let me just write FG for form group. That's what we're going to get right here. And how do we get that? Well, on a control, you can actually say get the parent, right? So now I have the parent of the control. That makes sense. So going in here, it means I'm looking at this control, but I want the parent and the parent is the form group, right? So that's what I have now inside this constant. Now the problem is that this will be called a lot of times. So sometimes the form group parent will be null. So I'll have to make a small null check, check here. So if there is actually a form group available, then I want to start doing something. So far, so good. What do I want to do? Well, if there's a form group available, I want to get another constant, which is actually going to be the password field, right? That's what I need. I need the password field and the repeat password field so I can kind of look at them both and check if they're actually running as I expect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say form group or the parent, please get, and I'm going to be very specific here again, please get me the password form control. There we go. So now we have the password form control. And notice you could start passing in information here if you want to make it more generic. I'm not going to do that this lesson, but you can do that if you want to. So now that we have both the repeat password and the password controls, let's try and use them. So what we want to do is we want to return something uh, if the password value is not the same as the repeat password value, then I want to actually return something. I'll do it with this 
very clever statement where you kind of make an if statement right here and if that's actually true, then I'm going to execute the first thing happening right after the question mark. And in our case, what we want to do is we want to actually return an object looking something like this. So I'm going to make that object now. The first step is to kind of give a name for my error and we're just going to call it no match. That's just a name for the error. And then I'm going to do a colon right here and then I'm going to set another uh, sorry, another object in here, which is just going to explain the value that I kind of want to present when we have such an error. And the value in this case, let's just put in the repeat password value so we can see uh, what's actually wrong in here. Now that was if everything, if this, if this ex um, expression is true, then we're going to do this. Then I'll do a colon right here, because if it's false, I just, false, I just want to return null. This is all I had to do. Now the last thing I want to do is, if we didn't find a form control, I'm also going to return null, so I don't care right now. So if there's no form control available, just return null. That's all we had to do. So now we have a match password validate already. Now we just need to try and use it. So jumping into my sign up component ts file, I have my required validator, and I'll just do a comma right here and add the other validator, which is the match password validator. That's all we had to do. Let's try and see if it works. So now I should have a custom validator that can actually start explaining if the password and the username is incorrect. Let's just try and put them in here. Right now they're actually the same, so it would work. Let me try and remove this. Now it's required, let me try and put in a wrong value. And you don't get any message yet, because I didn't set that up, but notice it's still red, so there's something wrong. Let's try and add the error message. So jumping back to the code right here, now notice, again, the error message will be no match when there's something wrong, right? So I'll just go into the HTML, I'll make for the repeat password, I'll make another error right here, right below it. And repeat password does, does not match password. I don't know, you can put in your own text right there. Now it's not required I'm looking for, it's the password, uh, sorry, the error called no match that I just made. That's what I'm looking for right here on the repeat password. Let's see if it works. Jumping back, going to put in an A here, and I'm going to put in a B here. Repeat password does not match. Going to put in an A down here now, now it matches. Going to remove everything, now it's required. And they actually have both right now. Do you know why that is? I'm using two different errors, but I'm not explaining to my fetch error that I want to ignore this guy. So all I have to do again is just to add this guy and add the required here, and then we're only going to get one. Pretty simple, right? Pretty simple. We're starting to make something that makes sense here. There we go, so now we only have this one. It actually explains right away that they don't match. Let's just put in AA here and remove everything and then you'll only see the required and AA here and everything is good. Sweet, we have it up and running. We just made a custom validator, which is actually not an easy thing. So congratulations if you got to that point. See you next time, have fun.